Around 2010, there was an increasing demand for 4G networks. I had some big concerns regarding LTE. Vodafone Germany is operating four networks. Unfortunately, the worst case would be to add now with LTE network number five, LTE 800 and network number six, LTE 2.6. 当时是我们和客户讨论，觉得原来传统的建网方式的话，都是重复建设，所以成本也很高，维护也很复杂。So we talked with our customers again to see if we could combine 2G, 3G, and 4G network equipment into a single unit. That's when single RAN was developed. According to our customers, this was a very attractive technological invention. Our vision is giving all of our customers two years from now. Broadband data coverage, where we do have voice coverage today, that we can do that. In 2010, the 4G LTE 800 MHz commercial service was first launched in Germany. The 800 MHz spectrum is best suited for the vast countrysides of Europe. In these so-called white spots, outside, in the countryside, in the small villages of Germany, hey, now it's really fast internet in my hands. We place it on coast, Great Altai Lake Aya, and we ready to start our section. Uh, remember, uh, walk language of our conference, English, only English. Uh, questions, answers, report, only in English language, okay? And we are start. First reported, Maxim Trigup. First of all, I would like to thank organizing committee for invite me to make a plenary report uh, because this conference, uh, it was a conference where I present, uh, it's first conference where I present my uh, PhD results uh, in 2011 year. So the aim of the work is the real-time visualization of us processes which are blocked from the viewing by the high-intensive background radiation. We are trying to create the methods and uh, means uh, to study the processes uh, under uh, background uh, glare. And the main challenge uh, is to find an ideal uh, active element uh, to create uh, the system based on uh, brightness amplifiers. Mm. The next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, could you give me a clicker for uh, change the slides and I will uh, ask you to help uh, switch on video. Give me a clicker, please. So the first uh, active uh, optical system is a laser projection microscope. The results are presented on the slide uh, because I have uh, a bit uh, little time uh, that was planned. I will skip uh, history and uh, now I will tell about... <laughs> Doesn't work. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there is uh, there are presented some results of the use uh, laser monitor for study the process under background radiation. It's um, uh, arc, and uh, on the uh, on the first uh, on the first picture, uh, you can't see my uh, <laughs> my laser my point on the screen. So just on the first picture, you can see is um, a glare and uh, this glare doesn't uh, allow to observe the process on the electrodes. Uh, on the uh, other, other picture, you can see the results of visualization in the laser monitor. Uh, and here you can see the um, changes on the uh, surface of electrode. Next slide, please. Here is the result of the visualization of uh, processes of interaction of laser uh, radiation with the uh, matter. Uh, 
uh, to create the new uh, materials and Professor Kremovsky named the device laser monitor and after that, after communication on the other conference, we decided uh, to create uh, the high speed uh, laser monitor based on our own uh, experience. Next slide, please. Uh, there is some result of other group of the use of laser monitor, which based on copper vapor brightness amplifier. Next slide, please. Uh, here is a scheme of uh, decreasing the brown radiation effect. Uh, there is a system with a laser illumination uh, source and passive filtration. Here presented the uh, methods of uh, spectral filtration when we use uh, the laser and uh, passive filter. Next slide, please. They presented the temporal filtration when we use a laser with um, a short pulse uh, duration and uh, camera with uh, uh, shortest uh, short exposure to increase the signal uh, uh, noise ratio. Next slide, please. Here they presented uh, here. Uh, the this slide demonstrated uh, why uh, laser monitor is uh, very effective uh, to decrease in the background radiation. It's uh, because their are futures. Uh, first of all, it's a um, uh, short uh, time uh, duration of image formation, uh, about uh, 20 uh, to 40 uh, nanosecond, and uh, it's a uh, high uh, amplification of the media. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here presented the typical uh, construction of the active element which uh, we used uh, to uh, build the system. Uh, two type of uh, uh, metal galite active uh, elements uh, which are based on uh, independent thermostabilization of active zone. Uh, the temperature of the generator of uh, ash uh, brom uh, and uh, active uh, media, copper bromide or other metal galite uh, element. Next slide, please. Here, uh, the use of these elements allow us uh, to optimize the uh, operation mode and create the system with a uh, maximum uh, time resolution to increase P PRF of uh, brightness amplifier. Next slide, please. Uh, here they presented the first result, which was shown on the first uh, conference EDM. You can click on each uh, video. Okay. Yeah, here is the uh, illumination, uh, laser illumination methods uh, based on the copper bromide vapor laser. Next, next slide, please. And uh, the next uh, part of the work was uh, uh, we decided to study the process of laser interaction with a target. Here is a scheme of the experiments, uh, the photo of laboratory model. The work was uh, made with our colleague from Yekaterinburg. Next slide, please. And uh, click on each video, please. And here you can see the result of visualization of laser interaction with the matter. The glare are very intensive. It, it doesn't allow to study the process in the uh, laser flame, uh, in, uh, in the time when the laser uh, interacted uh, with the... Uh, click on each video file, please. Here, yeah, yeah. Next. It's uh, illuminated uh, as a result of uh, visualization with uh, illumination of the uh, process and you can see nanopowder which uh, created by the uh, laser interaction uh, but we can't uh, see uh, what is going on uh, in the flame next slide please uh, and here with the laser monitor when we use uh, active filtration of uh, images click on the first video We can see the first moment of interaction. Uh, second video. And uh, at, the first, uh, at the first video, you can see the first moment of interaction without any glare effect. And on the second uh, video, you can see the result of visualization by the illumination and uh, passive filtration. And you can see uh, uh, other particles uh, which are reflected the images, uh, the light. Next slide, please. 
Here you can see the frame from the video uh, video file, and uh, on the first uh, on the first pictures, uh, it's uh, the result. Uh, it's after uh, power laser pulses. Uh, you see the uh, intensive glare at the first moment, but uh, with the laser monitor, we can see what's going on in this flame. It allows to study the processes and optimize uh, the methods of nanopowder production. Next slide, please. Yeah, it's uh, the last results which was obtained in this year. Click on uh, two uh, video. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one and uh, the next one. And this process uh, in uh, the flame, uh, which we see on the first uh, pictures, but uh, on the flame we can't see any glare and see only the hot, uh, hot particles, which are uh, the result of uh, interaction and evaporation of the target. Next slide, please. Next slide. This is a result of visualization of diamond synthesis by the SV, uh, CVD methods. I, I will not uh, discuss this point. Next slide, please. And uh, the last uh, scheme which we created is a bistatic laser monitor. Uh, when we combine two methods of laser illumination by the independent source and uh, active filtration by the brightness amplifier. And here is the result of uh, the visualization of metal uh, grid in the monostatic laser monitor upper uh, picture and the bistatic laser monitor. I want to say that the optical scheme doesn't change. We just uh, switch off uh, the independent illumination source, and as a result, the field of view are, in are increasing. And here is the result uh, uh, of the study of time shift, uh, time shifting between um, between uh, illumination uh, pulses and amplification pulses. It's uh, very important to find the optimal shift uh, because, as you can see. Uh, the changes in uh, some nanoseconds, uh, 10 nanoseconds, uh, leads to decreasing of uh, contrast and the brightness of the images. Next slide, please. And uh, here is the some uh, uh, adventures of uh, features of laser monitor, which uh, be static laser monitor. Uh, profits from the use of independent source. First of all, we uh, can increase the quality of the images uh, of the objects uh, with, uh, how to say, with the difficult, uh, complicated shape. Here's the result of uh, imaging of uh, two conductors, nickel aluminum. First picture is a monostatic laser monitor, and we can see that the one of the conductor is uh, too dark to study. But when we use uh, the bistatic laser monitor, the contrast is increased, and uh, we can uh, the study the process. Next slide, please. So switch on uh, first three video. Yeah. Here's the result of imaging of uh, discharge uh, of the direct current uh, arc in the bistatic laser monitor and uh, the down video, please. Yeah. And the result of uh, result of the imaging of uh, self-propagating high temperature synthesis. Uh, sorry, it uh, doesn't allow to... <laughs> To see it, so click on the yeah 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 yeah. This one. And this is of uh, process of uh, self-propagating high temperature synthesis of two conductors, nickel plus aluminium. On the picture, you can see that the Owen uh, glare is too intensive. Even with the uh, laser illumination and passive filtration, we can't decrease. Uh, fully decrease the glare and study the process uh, during the combustion. But with the laser monitor, the static laser monitor, we obtain the result which uh, allow to study these processes in glare. So next slide, please. Uh, and the bistatic laser monitor allows to increase the maximum distance uh, of object visualization. In the monostatic laser monitor, it's about three meters. In the bistatic laser monitor, we obtain the images located uh, up to uh, 10 uh, meters. Next slide, please. Some calculation. Next. 
I have a little time. Uh, here is the result uh, of uh, using the other uh, active media for uh, formation of images. And uh, on the first three uh, pictures, you can see the result of visualization with the use of man manganese uh, chloride uh, brightness amplifier. The two images uh, obtained in uh, visible spectral range. The last image is a sphere uh, spectral range with the sphere camera based on indie arsenide gallium uh, and each frame formed by the 20 nanoseconds. It's uh, too important uh, to, uh, for studying uh, the fast uh, processes and uh, uh, extremely important uh, for obtaining images in sphere uh, spectral range. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, some results, uh, some conclusions. We, uh, during this uh, time, we uh, got uh, enough experience to build a system for uh, high-speed images uh, of processes blocked uh, by intensive background radiation, increase the spectral range of our laser monitors and obtain some fundamental results uh, by the imaging. So, final slide, yeah. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, our project with, uh, of Russian Science Foundation. And thank you, organizing committee of this conference. It was a great pleasure to get this time. I would like uh, to answer all questions. Ah, okay, no. Thank you very much, Maxim. Very beautiful pictures. I have so several questions because something is. Um, uh, about um, nickel aluminium wires, yeah. uh, some slight nickel aluminium wires. For me, it's interesting, of course, with uh, laser. Like I, uh, sorry, da, 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 uh, yes, I will please. stop you when, I, uh, when there is a right pl pl uh, please slide. Sh please show, yes, slide. Stop. No, this one or next, oh, okay, this okay, one okay, is, okay. is good. For me, it's interesting what particular details can you see with bistatic laser monitor, which are impossible to see in monostatic scheme. Okay, the, pre uh, the previous slide. Previous. We, uh, <laughs> previous. Okay, okay. Here it's uh, <laughs> more detailed. Uh, we didn't um, compare the result of imaging in monostatic and bistatic laser monitor du during combus combustion. Uh, but uh, as you can see on this slide, uh, because of the uh, difficult shape of the object, uh, we didn't obtain uh, uh, contrast images of uh, full uh, field of view. It's understandable. I mean, yes, yes, I mean, uh, sorry, I mean, this part is too dark to. Uh, yes, Maxim, Maxim, it's it, it's not the what I want to hear. What particular details of combustion process? Because the final results, you uh, you need to get some fundamental results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What uh, what what particular results uh, you can see on more contrast, more contrast uh, image than okay, less contrast okay. image? Okay. Uh, it's difficult to explain on, uh, in English because it's not my uh, uh, topic of research interest, but the main idea is uh, to understand uh, uh, the flow of uh, metals on the surface in the mm, uh, burning uh, but uh, it's uh, not my question it's our colleague from uh, structure macrokinetic of uh, tsc uh, and uh, i didn't uh, uh, i i have known uh, full details of uh, these processes uh, difficult to um, okay maxim thank you very much about diamond uh, yeah uh, okay about uh, the previous slide. Uh, one more. One more. Yeah. Yes, uh, th this uh, very interesting and very huge task because uh, nano diamonds are very popular yeah. now for studying. Uh, <coughs> 
for me, I saw these pictures in your paper, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, please explain uh, uh, what, what you can see with laser monitor in general on that uh, s pictures. Two uh, pictures, yes. Uh, uh, two uh, pictures I cannot understand the uh, what is possible to see there. To uh, what, 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 which details, what is possible? some problems. The main idea is to find the uh, defect of, of the synthesis. Uh, this is defects. Uh, this is uh, which we see without uh, laser illumination. This is what we see I without... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is this is not very good because we see speckle, speckle picture which doesn't allow to see uh, the defect. Mm -hmm. But when we use the uh, uh, laser monitor, we can see this defect uh, with switch off of the plasma and with switch on of the plasma. Plasma doesn't uh, block uh, the picture and we can see this uh, defect of uh, the synthesis. It's very important to uh, it's, uh, it's very important to understand when the defect is uh, uh, created and stop the process of, uh, of synthesis not to use uh, the time and the energy and uh, uh, to decrease the price of uh, synthesis. It's very important to find it too early uh, because this one, I it is the end of the uh, process of synthesis. Mm -hmm. And this defect uh, uh, make uh, this uh, structure uh, is not u usable uh, in the future. Oh something like this. And the laser monitor uh, versus uh, laser illumination method uh, allow, allows uh, to get image without any speckle uh, picture. It's very important because uh, diamond, uh, difficult to get images uh, just in the camera by the laser illumination. Other method doesn't allow to see this one. Nature mm. experiments and... Uh, <coughs> okay. As far as I understand, it's, uh, now it's just demonstration. You yeah, 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 it's, not mm. it's just demonstration and uh, the next step, uh, we were trying to uh, create the methods, uh, uh, integrated these methods in the mm -hmm. uh, uh, synthesis camera uh, to use it uh, in, uh, in production, so to say. Because it's very important, uh, uh, I repeat, very important to uh, stop the process of, of synthesis when this defect uh, is uh, created. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question. Uh, about 100 kilohertz. Uh, mm -hmm. You okay. said about maximum time uh, resolution. Yeah. Uh, Which slide uh, may be just uh, discussion. <coughs> How do you think in laser monitor? What component of laser monitor leads to the no, real limiting of resolution. O of right now? Right now it's uh, just uh, mm, brightness amplifier, in my opinion. Because right now we can uh, buy, if we have enough money, buy one camera or with uh, high uh, frame repetition frequency or two camera with a bit lower uh, repetition frequency and get the images uh, with a high uh, time resolution. I will try to explain. This experiment was made with uh, uh, brightness amplifier with per f uh, 25 uh, kilohertz. And we obtained uh, images in each frame. The as far as I understand, it's uh, maximum for today uh, re uh, time resolution. No, 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 25. no, 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 we for in ah, for, you, for, you, for your work. For your work? No, oh, in our work, work we got uh, one uh, 100 kilohertz in a short uh, brightness amplifier with uh, semiconductor power supply. But mm -hmm. uh, we did get it after our uh, work with uh, our colleague from uh, Yekaterinburg. And uh, the next step is to uh, use this uh, brightness amplifier on their uh, laboratory. Because uh, this time resolution uh, doesn't allow to study uh, in uh, needed detail the process of uh, big particles formation in laser evaporation. But in our laboratory, we get it. Uh, the, ma the strict limited its uh, camera because on uh, 100 kilohertz, it's a two uh, shot area. But with the use two camera, we uh, will get uh, the needed result. 
No, so as far as I understand, uh, for real application of laser monitors, now uh, cameras are the main limiting factor for in your frame opinion. rate. From your in, opinion. In, in your no, as far as I understand, in general from your report and in general from state of the art. Yeah, we, we have uh, 100 kilohertz brightness amplifier. Uh, laboratory mm -hmm. model, but we didn't have uh, the good camera for use uh, the full um, um, uh, the full abilities of uh, this brightness amplifier because the area I, I, I will repeat because the, uh, the area of the imaging is uh, too short to study this process. Oh, well, okay, it's okay. Ne next will be exactly my opinion. I think that uh, while you have not a proper camera, because camera now it's a uh, difficult problem for every research group, if we say about high-speed camera. Mm -hmm. If you don't have uh, camera costs, uh, if we say about even camera with such resolution, it's about 4 million rubles for today. Yep. To develop uh, copper vapor laser such kind, no, 200 probably thousands. But more than an order of more than an order, the uh, cost of camera is higher than laser. So uh, now I think that is uh, it's idle or usefulness to develop uh, brightness amplifier with 100 kilohertz or 200 or 300 if you don't have proper camera. No, um, <laughs> I hope after uh, this year we will get the camera with the highest resolution because we are going to get it. And with uh, our brightness amplifier, we did study, uh, we will uh, study the processes with a new um, level of the result. Oh, yes, of course. We, uh, it's, uh, but but uh, it's still ongoing. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, quite maybe on the next uh, EDM, I will show the visualization result with uh, higher resolution uh, than uh, 25 uh, frame rate. Uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, the last video uh, on this slide uh, were obtained by um, in uh, 33 uh, kilohertz uh, f frame rate per second. And the uh, field of view on the camera uh, resolution was uh, 100 uh, to uh, 40 and it's quite enough to study the first uh, moment of interaction but uh, I will repeat uh, we didn't uh, have uh, the uh, portable um, high-speed brightness amplifier to get images even with this frequency Okay, Maxim, and, and, and uh, just uh, like comment uh, when the laser interact with the matter so it's like some kind of uh, I think combustion maybe process, ablation process. What are the typical time uh, res uh, time parameters of uh, this no, interaction of this ignition process, of detonation so-called process? What is the speed of this process? And it's uh, uh, okay. I, 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 I did get your question, but uh, I, I think it's. Uh, uh, more uh, speeder uh, than our camera, but uh, we are trying to understand uh, when and how the big particles uh, producing during a laser uh, pulse uh, interaction. A laser pulse, uh, I, I, I mean uh, in this work, laser pulse uh, duration is about one um, millisecond. And during this pulse, uh, we have uh, high intensive uh, laser uh, plasma flame, which doesn't allow observe what's going on in during this uh, interaction. But for production of nanopowder, it's uh, hot topic because uh, because it's uh, uh, determines the price and uh, economy effect and the quality of nanopowder. Uh, producing by these methods. That is why we are trying to increase the speed. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's important on practice and it's important to uh, create the model because even these results uh, allowed, uh, have allowed uh, to uh, build the model of uh, laser pulse uh, absorption by the different uh, uh, materials and uh, the result of this absorption. Uh, I mean, which particles, size of particles, uh, thermodynamics, uh, uh, flow, uh, and so on.
and if we will uh, increase the frame rate uh, it will be more uh, useful thank you very much maxim uh, we will wait for the next edm for the brilliant results about very very One very high speed <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> thank, thank you thank you thank you maxim okay uh, dear participant uh, remember your time only five minutes for Ma Maxim, uh, we. It's a brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it a brilliant it's uh, a, a thesis of uh, uh, doctors of science. Uh, In the future, not 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 nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> well, please uh, be shortly. Only five minutes for report e only five minutes for answers and questions. Monitors, <laughs> uh, but we continue. Next report by Abai Aldabekov. Laser monitor with independent elimination from capaci uh, capacitive discharge pumped cuprum brom laser for metal nanopowder combustion study. Please, five minutes. Okay, thanks. Um, I send my greeting participants and guests. Uh, at the conference, I will present uh, a report on the topic laser monitor with independent illumination from capacitive discharge pumped cuprum brom laser for metal nanoporous combustion study. Uh, please, next slide. What? No. Oh, it's me? No. Okay, thanks. Um, high energy materials are materials that are designed to generate energy that can be used uh, by various purposes, such as providing engine thrust, uh, scattering parts of a special object, generated light at sound effect, care airbags, uh, sweeps, local heating of electronic components, uh, in this regard, the combustion of energetic materials is a way of research in which it is important to understand what happiness of the sub substance directly during combustion. Uh, due to the fact uh, that during the combustion of nanopodes under the influence of a laser beam illumination a CAS, a lot of information useful for the research is lot such as morphological changes, uh, combustion waveform, uh, and other properties of the materials. It uh, becomes urgent to develop throughout the flame imaging devices and methods for research of ready-made solutions. Uh, please, next slide. Um, our, uh, due our literature review on the subject, uh, we found that image obtained using a laser microscope um, uh, with independent illumination, uh, first proposed in Botanian's work, uh, are brighter and have higher contrast uh, than those obtained earlier using the traditional monostatic laser monitor uh, scheme. Next slide, please. Uh, in the modern works of Trigup and Gubarev, it is shown that when using a bistatic laser monitor, uh, the surface image is brighter and more contrasting. As noted by a supervisor, this feature is especially important when observing low contrast objects with uh, lo low light reflections, such as metal nanopodes. Please, next slide. Um, based on this following research objectives were summarized as follows. Uh, to develop a capacitively pumped bistatic laser monitors for illumination, to find out the analogy and difference in the use of lasers with capacitive and conventional pumping as a source of laser monitor uh, illumination, 
in a similar scheme of a laser monitor uh, and to test the developer develop it, uh, laboratory equipment while observing the high temperature combustion of metal nanopods. Please, next slide. Um, next slide, please. Um, the experimental scheme uh, is shown on the slide. Uh, the object of study, it's uh, one point, uh, is combusted using an initiation closure, three. Oh, okay. Uh, Uh, the image is formed by brightness amplifier. Uh, illumination is uh, carried out using a black light laser, uh, 16 and 7 uh, amplifier. Uh, the socket is synchronized. Data on the brightness values from both lasers are sent to an oscilloscope, 25, and the image is sent to high-speed camera 22. Uh, please, next slide. Um, in the case of a bistatic laser monitor, one of the methods for obtaining a contrast image is to change the duration of the delay between the phases of the Tiratron activation between the channels of the lightning laser and the imaging laser. We achieved optimal brightness at contrast parameters with uh, the delay of 10 nanoseconds, where a Cooper mesh was used as a test object. Uh, next slide. Uh, experimental on the combustion of aluminum nanopodes uh, at optimal values of the delay were cut out. The site uh, clearly shows the region of laser initiation. It's 0.1. Uh, the formation of the combustion products. Uh, it's two, and the first and second combustion waves. It's three and four, a uh, number. Next slide. Uh, besides the experiment of the combustion of a mixture of aluminum and ferrum nanopodes was carried out, the slide um, clearly shows the region of laser, uh, the formation of the combustion product, the first and second combustion waves, and uh, as well the forming of the liquid phase. It's ORP of five, uh, it's liquid of us. Please, next slide. Um, in conclusion, we could say the results of observation of the combustion of aluminum nanopodes and uh, nano-aluminum and uh, nano-ferrum mixture demonstrated the promising nature of using the laser monitor with independent illumination for studying the combustion of metal nanopodes and their mixtures in real time. Uh, the image obtained with illumination from a capacitively and convectionally pumped um, tubes revealed a high peak contrast and more pronounced image, uh, sharpness in the case a capacitive tooth. However, the fact uh, requires uh, further study. Uh, the use of capacitive discharge pumped lasers has difficult associated with the need to operate at higher pump voltage in compression with traditional gas discharge tubes, which increases the requirements for a high voltage power supply. Higher electrode voltage and uh, larger electrode size reduce the electromagnetic compatibility of the laser. Uh, thank you for your attention. Maxim Trigub, uh, thank you. Very interesting uh, report. I would like uh, to ask you about the uh, object of observing. Uh, which energy uh, and uh, uh, of I I ignition laser needed to initiate the process of uh, burning? Mm -hmm. Because on your picture it was a short, uh, short part of your object where uh, the laser was ig ignited uh, these processes. Which energy needed to start this process? Um. Our laser ignitions um, have uh, two watt uh, power, but uh, for burning, uh, our need um, about 130 milliwatt. During which time? Because firstly, you heated your uh, uh, structure, 
and after some time it uh, start burning right yes which time need i i mean ah. energy energy because uh, uh two watts it's uh, power but power yeah. by the time no okay uh uh it's uh, not uh, long time for ignition uh i don't know um uh, true uh, values uh, because uh, it is uh, uh, it doesn't <laughs> matter uh time of ignitions okay okay and really it, it matters since No, it's this experiment. <laughs> uh, I, I just, uh, I closer, I want just a uh, little bit at information. Uh, uh, really, it's matter, and uh, it's a question of uh, future study. Uh, in our experiments, was enough 0.3 second for ignition, and then the igniting laser switched off. So 0.3 was enough you know, for ignition. And if it's possible, the second if it's possible the second question we have okay, to, okay. a few time uh, could you explain why you decided to use uh, capacitive uh, discharge tube to illuminate uh, there are any profits uh, or just uh, you have it uh, capacitive discharge tubes uh, it's uh, the um have the long um lifetime, lifetime. no no uh, it's a <laughs> long uh, work period maybe lifetime no okay yes <laughs> and no other point just uh, uh lifetime um, i mean in uh, uh, in uh, imaging any profit in imaging of your object or some other profit um capacitive pump at not worse uh, but to say for such such as um, for sh sure um, which is better um, we need uh, more experiments okay thank you thank you mm -hmm. Next reporter is Nikolai Karasev for this increase of radiation pulse duration of Kupum Brom laser in the train mode. So I'm an engineer of Institute Atmospheric Optics Tomsk. And now I'm ready to introduce my report called uh, Increase of Radiation Pulse Duration of Copper Bromite Laser in the Train Mode. Okay, it's generally known that uh, copper bromide laser works only in pulse mode and uh, with its typical duration of 50 nanoseconds. Uh, in some fields this can be a uh, trouble and there are lots of works aimed at uh, increasing radiation pulse duration. But uh, yet the question of controlling radiation pulse duration along with Uh, discharge parameters is still not covered and uh, the aim of my work is to, tr to track the dependence of copper bromide laser radiation pulse duration and discharge characteristics on the time delay between the pulse strain and excitation pulse. In figure one you can see the scheme of experimental setup so it, it, it is noticeable that it has three power sources connected in parallel to each other. Here in figure two, you can see the logic of the operation of uh, power sources. The, the, par the parameters of suppressive pulse number two in this figure was, uh, was selected experimentally. The pulse of, uh, of the train, after the last pulse of the train with change in time delay, letter tau in, in this scheme, there is a pumping pulse number three. So the, the pause T was, uh, was steady. Here you can see the parameters of experiments, number of pulses in the train, <coughs> 200, 10 kilohertz pulse repetition frequency in the train, charge, vol volt of, charge voltage of capacitors is 14 kilovolts and capacity 1650 picofarad. Time delay 
the experiments were carried out with and uh, without ash brom and uh, the the technique of experiment was generally similar but the time delay was increased till 5000 uh, microseconds with ash brom and without ash brom we have 200 uh, 2000 to 200 microseconds here you can see pulses of voltage current and uh, radiation with um, 200 pulses in the train you can see that they are generally similar but for presence of um, of hydrogen bromide we can see that we have the increase of voltage and the fall of current and so the radiation pulse duration is is bigger than in figure three so here here are the results of our experiments in this figure we can see the dependence of voltage amplitude on on the delay time you can see that uh, with adding of ash brom till 400 microseconds we have an increase in voltage and after that it uh, becomes lower and doesn't depend doesn't depend on the time delay so this contradicts with usual with usual effects of um, of ash brom addition but uh, this will be the theme of uh, next uh, research here you can see the dependence of radiation energy on the delay time. We can see that w without Ashbrom, the energy have a certain peak and then declines till till the till the previous uh, level and then decline lower. So we think that um, that this peak is caused by more effective uh, population of uh, upper working levels we can, in this slide we can see the dependence of radiation pulse duration on the delay time it was expected that the um, that the radiation pulse duration for ash brom is uh, longer to conclude i can say that the maximum achieved pulse duration is 230 nanoseconds for 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 the absence of ash, ash brom and uh, 300 nanoseconds for the presence of Ashbrom. The most optimal range of control is from 0 to 500 nanoseconds for a copper bromide laser without adding Ashbrom and from 0 till 1500 microseconds when Ashbrom is added. So the further in investigations can be aimed to so okay, can be aimed to creating a universal supply. Thanks for attention. Now I'm ready to answer your questions. Oh, I have several. <laughs> Somebody else. Uh, shortly, has... please. Shortly. Ah, uh, yes. Please shortly. The first uh, question in general: uh, thirty, uh, ah, three hundred, three hundred nanosecond. Is a principal okay. limitation connected with uh, copper atom, or it's just limitation of your experimental setup? Uh, it's uh, not the limitation of my experimental setup because it, 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 we have stopped uh, at this number because the pulse of radiation be, becomes very distorted. So it is actually so it, it's uh, very difficult to operate with it. Uh, please, please think about. Probably it's a physical limitation. Probably it's not connected with technique. Uh, uh, about capacitances, okay. what, uh, the value of capacitances, uh, uh, no, uh, I, it's uh, they are calculated, are they calculated or it's just intuition? So it, uh, they, they were found uh, experimentally, so for, for this experiment we have such uh, uh, quantity of uh, capacitance. Experimentally, so we tried several. Yeah, tried several and uh, choose. 
and choose uh, the proper. Okay, uh, probably it's better to calculate the energetic parameters which are necessary for your experiments according to the frequency of operation, according to the pulse duration. Calculate, try to estimate, try to estimate the approximate values of capacitances. No, at least, and then, uh, well, then of course, clarify it or uh, make more clear experimentally. So it's just uh, in, ad uh, in advance. And uh, the last question uh, appeared. So power sources, uh, two uh, power supply, two cyrotrons with uh, two capacitances as far as uh, two power supplies. It's like classic. Uh, so it's it's scheme. It's scheme. It's uh, very close to classic schemes which are well described in literature. So uh, wh why uh, uh, you did not try the scheme? with one power source from one power supply with complicated uh, excitation pulse. For me, it's more interesting topic mm, of... Yeah, actually, it's more interesting, but uh, this scheme is usually simpler. And besides, we can track the pulses on two sources. So this will be more convenient for, for ob observing the, res the results. Oh. No, as, as convenience, yes, it's true. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Speaker is Sergei Lysakov with uh, his report Research on Adaptation of Multi Criterial Electro Optical System, Electro Optical System under Object in the Form of Belt Roadway of Coal Mine for Fire Control. Please. Hello, colleagues. I'm engineer from BISC Technological Institute. Uh, Multi-criterial electro-optical system uh, for control pre-emergence and emergency situation in coal mines is development and BISC Technological Institute. Uh, uh, pre-emergency and emergency situation are associated with occurrence gas contamination with methane, dustiness and uh, coal dust, uh, also fires. Uh, adaptation of system consists of uh, in determining method for light electro-optical sensors on the objects. Uh, Uh, sensors of methane coal dust, uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and flame sensors uh, uh, should be placed in mines. Uh, analysis of concentration fields uh, for methane coal dust, uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide uh, is carried out. Uh, 
uh, aim of uh, this work is carry out a study on adaptation multicriterial system uh, to the belt roadway of coal mine to control presence uh, uh, conveyor belt fire. Uh, tasks are given below on slide. Uh, research is carried out based on a computer simulation uh, in a fire dynamic simulator. Uh, <coughs> uh, main approach. Uh, based on additional points for placement, uh, sensors are determined. Uh, uh, placement uh, taking into account uh, velocity and direction of airflow on propagation combustion products. Uh, minimization of detection time of combustion. Uh, <coughs> mine is working is controlled by several sensors over long section. Uh, by choosing distance between sensors uh, uh, for early detection of uh, maximum permissible concentration of combustion products. Uh, approach to layout of uh, sensors. Uh, uh, at simulation, fire is uh, conveyor belt combustion uh, at airflow velocity from 0 0.5 to 4 meters per second. Uh, in computer simulation, uh, uh, are simulated uh, concentration fields for uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and uh, distribution flame optical radiation in belt roadway. Uh, signals from uh, sensors, uh, gas sensors, are analysis by excess uh, gas con concentration. Also, we uh, obtain uh, carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide ratio uh, uh, and threshold values uh, of uh, this ratio. Flame sensors uh, locations are selected by comparing values of irradiance detected by sensors from fires. Uh, initial data for simulation. Uh, computer simulation uh, was carried out using Fire Dynamics Simulator. This is a specific uh, program for simulation of fires. Uh, models used in FDS presented on slide. Uh, next slide, uh, also initial data, uh, combustion reaction. Uh, thermal radiation power and parameters of uh, convenior belt. Uh, this is boundary conditions uh, used uh, three zones, burning zones and two zones in linear part of conveyor. Uh, uh, results of uh, simulation. Uh, is presented on slide. Uh, co combustion products uh, propagate in uh, opposite direction and uh, in direction of airflow. Uh, this uh, uh, presented uh, data about uh, carbon monoxide concentration at uh, different uh, values of uh, airflow speed. Uh, this uh, area of concentration must be taken in account at uh, placement of uh, sensors. Uh, results about irradiance. Uh, uh, 
uh, flame sensors are located at point F3 and uh, head of uh, uh, 1.6 uh, from the floor uh, most likely close to ignition point flame sensors are oriented uh, in the direction of airflow in uh, low concentration zone of combustion products uh, at slide uh, are shown uh, uh, results uh, for layout of uh, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide sensors in a linear part of conveyor. Uh, conclusions. Uh, uh, as a result, we obtain data about uh, layout uh, different sensor gas sensors for uh, multicriterial systems and uh, flame sensors. Uh, 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 research based on uh, Grand President of Rus Russian Federation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Question, please. Okay, Uh, the ninth, uh, ninth slide, please. No, where, where the velocities of combustion? Ah, this one. Uh, for, for details of experiments, uh, so this is propagation in the tube? Uh, experiment, mm, or not? No, uh, yes. Uh, uh, coal mine is uh, a longitudinal tube. Uh, Ah, so, uh, oh, it, it, it's, it's modeling results. It's, ah, it's modeling, mod results. modeling results. And uh, like two point, what is the diameter taken into account? Uh, three meters. Three meters diameter of the tube. And length, if we look here, the uh, 36, it's uh, Length, uh, three zones. Uh, first zones, 27 meters. Uh, at uh, direction airflow, uh, 300 meters. And uh, in direction opposite airflow is 100 meters. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Sergey. Thank you. Experimental study of multi-criterial electro-optical system operation in control of pre-emergency and emergency situation in the form of methane contamination, dustness, and fire. <coughs> Good day. Sorry for my English. Huh? Так, uh, I need to help this paper because my English такой. <coughs> my work is uh, continuous of previous uh, previous uh, work uh, and uh, study related to the development of multicriterial electro-optical system for control pre-emergency and emergency situation in coal mines uh, experimental study. In this slide, you can see the purpose and the task of study. Uh, uh, two different experimental setup and methodology, and uh, uh, the necessary to carry out, carry out check the applic applicability of proposed approach to the placement of MCOS sensors. In this slide, you can see experimental setup. Uh, the design of experimental setup was developed based on the most probable scenarios of for occurrence of methane con contamination and dust with coal dust. The first scenario is uh, associated with the lagging of ventilation pipes. The second scenario for the uh, is associated with the long shutdown of the booster fan. 
zone with high concentration of methane and dust is formed as the active phase. And dust occurs when combined mines call a stopped ir irradiation system. The experimental setup of the pipe of four meter long and diameter of uh, 0 0.5 meter disclosed and uh, and open end. Methane and coal dust sensors are placed in the center uh, and uh, at open end on to determine, determine the distribution of methane and coal dust concentration along the length of setup. In this slide you can see study methodology and, uh, and uh, placement of measuring points of air flow velocity V1, V3. In this slide, uh, study results. Study was carried out uh, for the scenario of methane contamination and distance in blind drift with a lack of ventilation pipes. The airflow velocity at points V1, uh, V3 with the ventilation pipe lagging, lagging uh, Simulation data on the airflow velocity is in satisfactory agreement uh, with the experimental data at point of V1, V3. Так, in this slide, the experimental study was carried out, uh, taking into account the most probable scenario of, of a fire in belt road away. Uh, ignition of the conveyor belt during friction of belt against the drive drum in the place of uh, thermal contacts for 50-20 minutes. The experimental setup is the pipe of 4 meter long and uh, 0 0.5 meter in diameter with closed and end open end. Study results in this slide. Uh, study experimental results you obtain on the applicability of uh, approach to the placement of uh, dioxide and uh, oxide carbon concentration sensor and flame sensors in the direction. The experimental data will be compared with the simulation data in uh, PDS. Uh, according to the experimental results, file detection can be performed but separately with the COMPC is research. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Please, questions? Uh, uh, what uh, gas sensors are used in your experimental first setup uh, at uh, determining uh, methane contamination? It is uh, optical uh, gas sensors. Sorry. Sensors name MIPEX 21. Another reporter, Andrei Kim, with experimental testing of a complex method for increasing decision making reliability for electro optical devices for fire detection on background of dynamic optical interferences. Good morning, my name is Andrew Kim. The uh, topic of my work is experimental testing of a complex method for an increasing decision making reliability by electro optical devices for fire detection on background of dynamic optical interferences. Uh, 
the aim of work is an experimental testing of a complex method for increasing the decision making reliability by electro optical devices for fire detection on background of dynamic optical interferences. The task of uh, this work uh, also presented on this slide. Uh, at the first stage, an experimental stand for the adequacy testing of complex method was assembled. The experimental stand contains optical bench on which, using tripod, the electro optical devices under study is fixed. The radiation source also is uh, fixed using uh, an hour tripod. Electro optical devices are installed on the same optical axis with radiation source. The analog to digital converter unit receives uh, the converted signals from electro optical devices current voltage uh, converters. Digital data is fed to the personal computer and processed. At the second stage, uh, calibration for electronic optical devices was performed. Calibration of these devices aimed to obtain a calibration coefficient for each two of device channels. It is allowed taking into account the spectral current sensi sensitivity of the photodiodes and the spectral ranges of detection. The calibration procedure includes the following steps presented on this slide. The calibration results are shown in Table 2. Uh, for fewer research, uh, we used the complex method. Uh, the complex method includes the steps presented on this slide. Uh, the adequacy of the complex method under the influence of the fire radiation of the electro optical devices was checked according to the developed technique. Uh, the data on the spectral radiant luminosity and relative units for the propane, alcohol, and diesel burner, wooden blocks in burning, and polyurethane foam, met burning, and different time moments was obtained. The temperature of fires was calculated according to the measured spectral luminosity, with table 3 shows with the different time points and characteristic of the spectral irradiance, and the derived values vary slightly. The values of the emissivity are controlled by wavelength change and significantly over time. View the compression of the data on the temperature and spectral emissivity with the literary data was carried out for the time point. In addition, the relative error of the temperature calculated is estimated. The relative error of temperature calculated for fires that not exist uh, 13% when it's co compared with the literature data. Um, The adequacy of complex method under influence of optical inter interference, radiation on the electro-optical electro -optical devices is carried out according to the developed method. Spectral radiant luminosity was measured in, in relative units when turning on the turning off of power supply. Temperature of lamp at different times was calculated and when the lamp power source is switched on and off. The calculated maximum temperature of lamp is 2499 Kelvin and it's close to the maximum temperature of 2455 Kelvin previously obtained experimentally by the wavelength scanning method. Uh, the rules for the decision making by, by all electro optical devices about the presence of fire or dynamic optical interference uh, determinated. The complex method allows determining temperature and spectral emissivity with satisfactory accuracy. Complex method allows determining dependence of temperature and spectral emissivity from time. Reliable decision making about the presence of fire or dynamic optical interference is carried out under the established rule based on the, wave, on the values of the informative parameters. Uh, the conclusion which can be drawn from my presentation a complex method m allows uniquely ident identifying the presence of fire and or dynamics optical interferences. Uh, thank you for annotation. Thank you. Thank you for the report. Uh, could you uh, switch on your scheme of the experiment?
Окей, okay, yeah. uh, You choose uh, photo diode mm -hmm. on each wavelength and uh, 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 calculate or uh, measure, or measure uh, the signal from each photo diode, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, could you uh, tell which uh, type of photo diode you used and uh, which bandwidth uh, and sensitivity on this line of each photo diode? Uh, 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 did you uh, calculate it or just uh, ch check it from uh, specification of uh, this uh, element? Okay, we used uh, photo diodes from company your affiliate. Uh, and band width mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sensitivity on this line. You write only uh, central line, right? Right. Yeah. And what is uh, wavelength uh, band width of uh, the photodiode on each channel? Because if you see, for example, the first photodiode, mm -hmm. 1.9 uh, micrometers, right? Mm -hmm. And the second photodiode, uh, 2.1 micrometer. If your band is uh, no, uh, 0 0.2 uh, micrometers, your photodiode both uh, sends the signal on from your uh, test object. It's very important uh, to uh, include the information about uh, sensitivity and bandwidth of your photo diet. This photo diet have uh, filters. Yes, it should be... 150 <laughs> nanometers. Which? 150 nanometers. 150 nanometers. Yeah, then it's quite important uh, to write this information because uh, then you... Uh, uh, Measure signal not only one mm -hmm. uh, wavelength on spe in spectral range, yes. and uh, your line is too close to each uh, other. Mm -hmm. It's just a recommendation uh, because I read your paper and uh, see it. I think it's very important to include it. Mm -hmm. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Any questions, please, colleagues? Okay, thank you, Andrei. Influence of the parameters uh, pre-treatments of lithium neobate surface with plasma and ultraviolet radiation on a proton exchanging in benzoic acid melts. Thank you. Hello, dear friends. Yeah, okay. Just let me check a clicker. Oh, it works, yeah. Hello, dear friends. My name is Roman Panomarev. I am from Perm State University. My field of study is integrated optics, photonics. Uh, and <laughs> I'm very pleasure to see all of you face to face, not in a screen. Uh, thanks for uh, organizing committee for that. Did you, did you attend it uh, last year? Uh, no. Okay. My report is devoted to the formation of uh, waveguides in a lithium niobate. We use a proton exchange method for making a waveguide. The ions of hydrogen are going into the crystal lattice and the area with uh, increasing uh, index of refraction became a waveguide. Uh, okay, this process have two steps, a proton exchange, and the next is annealing for stabilization of optical properties of waveguide. Uh, the first step, uh, we, after the first step, we have this profile of index of refraction. It's like step. And after the annealing, the step became lower, and this is a good stable waveguide. Uh, 
uh, when we have proton exchange waveguide, we have a lot of phases, crystallic, crystallographic phases in a very thin layer of uh, lithium niobate. Actually, we have a zoo of phases in a X cut and Z cut. And that phases uh, have a different deformation of a lattice. Okay, the uh, goal of research. The main question was how first step cleaning is connected with the last step, the result of proton exchange. Uh, we are cleaning our samples with piranha solution, with argon plasma, and with ultraviolet treatment. And the experiment was... Uh, oh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Maxim. And the experiment was prepare samples, make a cleaning in a plasma and UV treatment, make a proton exchange, and make a measurement of optical properties. What about results for? Z plus cut of crystal, we have no influence of plasma and UV treatment. The index of refraction change is the same and proton exchange layer is the same. For X cut and minus Z cut, we have weak influence. This is not very interesting results, but it was necessary to show it. But the next step, we have found a lot of interesting structure on the surface of our sample using a dark field optical microscopy. We have found elevated, very thin elevated strips on all surface of a sample and it can be danger for your waveguides. It can increase your losses, optical losses, and it can, it can be a lot of points of uh, Refraction, yeah. Using an optical profilometer, we have found that these strips have a thickness about 15 nanometers, and the other strips uh, are hmm. okay. The other strips are bigger, about two micrometers and all of these structures have a bigger deformation when we are using plasma treatment uh, like we uh, can see using x-ray diffraction in conclusion in conclusion when you have a mass production of optical waveguides in a lithium niobate, you need to be careful using a plasma treatment. And for ultraviolet, we have no influence for our waveguides. Thank you for attention. Your questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for our participant from Pale? No question. Thank you. Your report was very, <laughs> very nice. I understood. <laughs> Not questions for okay. you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Konstantin Yuryevich Semenov. I am a master student of Tomsk Polytechnic University and an engineer at the Laboratory of Quantum Electronics at the EOSB RAS.
что-то чуть-чуть не работает. Окей, я см... Я смол... Да, ё-моё. He speaks in English only. Ё-моё. Uh, uh, small introduction. Uh, the metal vapor laser, it is the gas discharge tube, like a figure one, with an active substance inside. And it's um, certain requirements uh, imposed to the pumping source. It is the uh, pulse mode operation and uh, with uh, higher efficiency, oh, sorry, with a higher uh, energies in the pulse. Uh, for example, it is voltage level uh, about 10 kilovolts and uh, current can reach uh, several hundred amperes. Um, depending on the power of pumping supply and uh, its frequency, we can use semiconductor switches and tyrotrons. Uh, for example, the block diagrams of excitation pump source with tyrotrons present on figure 2. Uh, the tyrotrons, it is just uh, a switch which uh, discharge storage capacitor on the gas discharge tube. And to charge this storage capacitor, we use high voltage converters. And the main aim of this work, uh, it is to improve the high voltage converter parameters. Some trouble. Okay. Uh, high voltage converters typically use a single stage uh, charge source like in figure 3. Uh, such sources have a number of disadvantages and uh, we implemented it uh, when development uh, the multi-stage capacitor charge sources. Uh, it is a uh, source you can see on figure 4. Uh, this circuit is a full bridge resonant inverter which uh, charges storage capacitor uh, from the from uh, by the burst of uh, high frequency pulses. Uh, you can see that the single stage uh, sources Uh, use one pulse to charge the capacitor. It is figure 5. And our new sources with a multi-stage charge use the burst of uh, high frequency pulses on the high frequency. Uh, for example, you can see uh, diagrams uh, with uh, frequency discharge of capacitor is uh, 20 kilohertz and uh, the voltage across the storage capacitor was uh, about 8 kilovolts. In our experiments, we change the frequency of uh, burst uh, from 200 kilohertz to 400 kilohertz. And we can also change the number of uh, Uh, charging pulses, uh, for example, in figure, in figure, in left figure, you can see uh, three period of uh, working inverter. It is uh, six pulses or three period. In five, in right figure, you can see uh, five period, and it. Uh, using it, we can. Uh, choose optimal um, op optimal operating uh, model um, uh, режим сейчас, сейчас, сейчас. mode uh, of uh, inverter uh, and uh, we successfully solve a number of tasks uh, when developing a multi-stage charge sources It is uh, interchangeability with uh, existing single stage charge sources. It is uh, improving the EMC and uh, reducing the weight and size parameter of magnetic elements. 
uh, and we reducing the level of high frequency sound uh, during the operation of the charging sources. The direction of uh, further work, the inverter design optimization and increase in efficiency. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, decreasing of no noise, noises of uh, uh, yes, it's decrease uh, like noise of Emmy, no, like mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, high frequency sound. Uh, what which we hear by our okay. uh, and how you estimated the decreasing of noises. Noises. Uh, no, for le no, electromag EMC? electromagnetic ah, okay. capability. How, uh, how you estimated this? Excuse me. Uh, on this if slide, if you can see the diagram of current. It is uh, these diagrams, and uh, in the uh, single stage uh, uh, source, it is high. Mm, uh, high energies pulse of current which we uh, took from the uh, from the capacitance or from the electricity and uh, the emmy filter which we use in every device uh, have uh, some uh, uh, characteristics which uh, more effectivity uh, как это сказать, uh, suppress the noise in the high frequency, for example, in the uh, 100 or 500 kilohertz, uh, it is uh, effectivity more than 10 times than on frequency of uh, 10 kilohertz or 20 kilohertz. Oh. And it, this is no one of the... Uh, it, no, yes. Uh, from my point of view, if we are talking about uh, noises protection and about influence of noises of the electrical circuit, it's uh, first of all connected with the influence of power supply on the another uh, components of, uh, no, in general, of your equipment, oscilloscopes, cameras, yes. computer, and so on. And uh, because you use Cyrotron, as far as I know, Cyrotron as well as gas discharge tube, it's the main sources of electromagnetic noises. Uh, yes, I understand your question. Uh, we decrease the size of uh, high voltage transformer and uh, uh, when we reduce the number of uh, secondary and uh, primary widening turns, we reducing the uh, uh, parasitic parameter. Stray parameters. Uh, yes. Maybe. And uh, when Tiratron is switched uh, in the classical single stage sources, it is uh, it, it's uh, very noise in the primary uh, winding from uh, secondary winding. Uh, when we use uh, multi stage charge, the transformer has uh, more lower. Uh, capacitance between primaries and uh, the noise from uh, Tyratron working don't uh, don't go to the primary winding. Uh, I understand well, uh, your discussion is good. You try to uh, explain uh, uh, no, why do you do this work but uh, for really you need to provide uh, no, you are PhD student, as far as I understand. Ah, master student. Master student. If you are going for PhD, of course, you need to prove uh, the necessity of such uh, no, modification of power supply, and uh, first of all, connect it with electromagnetic compatibility. And uh, you need to think about how to estimate what components of your electrical circuit and in general of your system uh, has the most influence on uh, uh, RF radiation uh, in uh, 
the space, uh, some uh, noises for electrical network, uh, and so on. And uh, use you know, some parameters, you know, qualitative or quantitative, uh, not to be just discussion. Just uh, we estimate it with this uh, in this mode of operation and this mm -hmm. mode of operation and this mode of operation and come and can make a conclusion that in multi-stage operation, noises decreases two times or so 30, 50 percent or something like this. No, it is difficult to uh, um, comparison uh, single stage and uh, multi-stage sources because the multi-stage source uh, work uh, without uh, emi filters it can work without any emi filters because the level of this emi is so low uh, with uh, common uh, single stage sources single stage sources uh, hard to work with uh, big emi filter it uh, generates a lot of noise in the electricity. Uh, in the electricity, uh, it can uh, turn off some uh, electric device which uh, stand близко uh, near with a single stage charge. But the multi stage uh, charge sources work without any filters. It uh, don't. Uh, Produce noise in the electricity. Uh, tyrotrons and gas discharge tube in these experiments. Uh, the yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, doesn't count. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Very good answer. Last his report. Synthesis of oxide. Materials for electrochromic panels by spray pyrolysis. Please start. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, let me bring to your attention a report on the topic synthesis of oxide materials for electrochromic panels by spray pyrolysis. Electrochromic panels are the most common type of smart glasses, which change uh, their ability to transmit light from the supply to electricity. Moreover, the optical properties of the materials used in such panels must be reversible. It is the initial state returns when the voltage polarity is reversed. Electrochromism is found in many organic and inorganic substances. The most popular electrochromic materials are oxides. Oxides of the following transition metals have electrochromic properties. Cerium, chromium, cobalt, copper, iridium, iron, manganese, molybdenum, nickel, praseodium, rhodium, ruthenium, tantalum, titanium, tungsten, and vanadium. Most electrochromic covers returns from optical intolerant charge transfers. Uh, the colors of most trans transitional oxides electrochromes. Uh, in the range from uh, blue to black. Less often, other colors are absolute. Transfer conductive coatings, TC2, are varied in film materials, semiconductive metal oxides, polymers, carbon, carbon structures that have uh, high electrical conductivity and good optical transparency. The most widely used TCOs today are based on metal oxides, metal oil. Most of them are binary compounds. Uh, in 203, zinc O, uh, SNO2, containing one metallic element. Uh, this slide shows all materials and the impurities for transparent conductive coatings. Traditional method of obtaining this kind of coatings have a number of disadvantages, in particular. They are limited by user vacuum, which increases the cost of both the, of both the, the installation itself and the resultant coatings. Also, the equipment itself is difficult to use. Therefore, it was decided to use the spray pyrosis or aerosol pyrosis method. Ah. As a result of the work, 
uh, an installation was developed for obtaining the infill coatings by the method of aerosol pyrolysis. The structural diagram is shown on the slide. ECO uh, have a good optical transparency. Transmittance uh, T more than uh, 18% uh, in the visible and near infrared regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Therefore, the TCO transmission window is in the range uh, lambda from 400 nanometers uh, to 1,500 nanometers. And this is explained by the fact uh, that in the region of long waves, lambda more than 1,500 1, nanometers, light is reflected as a result of the appearance of a plasma edge when the light frequency omega coincides as, uh, uh, with the frequency of collective os oscillations of charged carriers in a material. Plasma frequency uh, omega p. A transparent conductive oxides have over 19.3% uh, uh, transparency in the visible region. This slide shows the transmission spectra of the samples uh, CNO2 plus CBO. Surface resistance gradually decreases with an increase in the volume of the solution, the cluster concentration, and the beauty concentration. The antimony replaces uh, tin atoms in the lattice. As a result, antimony atoms act as donors and create an excess amount of free electrons. A slight increase in RS values above a certain doping consideration is, uh, this, uh, is due to the fact that uh, excess Antimony atoms do not occupy the correct positions in the lattice. Now this leads to structural breakdown and the increase in surface resistance. Analysis of the current voltage characteristics, CVC, allows us to conclude that the films are isotropic. It is uh, in all, director, all directions. <coughs> They have the same physical properties. This is confirmed by the linear nature of the dependencies before the transition to saturation. In addition, the IV characteristic branch for each direction of all studied samples are located close to each other, not taking into account permissible errors. The position of uh, an electrochemical film is performed on a substrate with a pre applied conductive layer. The quarter synthesis and temperature is from 300 to 450 degrees of Celsius. <laughs> Since this range is most acceptable for obtaining a high water quarter, which is confirmed by the results of their studies. The electronic uh, VO3 parameters of these synthesized films are characterized by a high staining efficiency 102 and 8 centi square centimeters per second, and the fast response time, which is uh, 7.6 7 seconds and 4.2 seconds for staining and discoloration, respectively. Shown in the slide, we where OD is the optical density, CM charge density. Must post on the on slide presentation. Susan, probably you said in the presentation, maybe I did not quote, in what range the transparency can be controlled by electrical current? From full transparency to, for example, 20 percent or something like this, is it possible? Please explain. Yes, yes, please. English. 
Можно на русском? No. Uh, Only English. Сейчас. Минуточку. Do I understand the question? Я понимаю, я все. Только я не I'm not an author of this paper. I'm only speaker. Okay, so thank you very much. I, I, I probably will ask the author of the paper, so thank you for the presentation. Our section is L, all, and we can have a rest <laughs> now. <laughs> Coffee break is over, unfortunately, <laughs> but we have a rest. Thank you for all. There are over 800 telecom service providers across the whole of Europe. The operator community relies on a diverse supply base for competitive advantage in technologies. We're the operator. We would uh, consistently, with a team of experts inside the company, seek across the world for the latest innovations, the latest developments, the potential suppliers that could give us a leadership position, we strive for performance leadership and quality for our customers. Of course, we did develop a lot of things ourselves, but for infrastructure, we relied very heavily across the world for the very best in class of uh, suppliers. 2006年,华为跟沃达丰一起在西班牙马德里成立了全球第一个联合创新中心。华为车的负责人当时就是我。沃达丰客户突然提出了一个命题，这是一个跨时代的创新。双方应该努力地往这个方向去努力，最终促成了申购浪影解决方案的落地。申购浪影把多座次的间网模式彻底打通了，极大地降低了运营商的间网成本。当